Hey, good afternoon or good morning, wherever you are in the world. Uh, today is uh, Saturday. Um, last night was uh, Good Friday. Um, and um, I spoke yesterday on Psalm 22, which depicts the, um, the suffering of Jesus uh, on the cross. And uh, it's an amazing psalm. There's so many uh, links with the New Testament. And I made those links yesterday. So that's a really interesting psalm to read. But um, something else, you know, about today. So today is Silent Saturday. And uh, you're wondering, so what happened when, uh, when Jesus was dead for this uh, two, two and a half day or so that, that, he, um, that he was in the grave? What did he do? And um, the Apostles' Creed, which is a, um, a document that, um, that many churches use, especially the Roman Catholic Church, Lutheran Church, many others, uh, they say um, in the fifth, um, the fifth uh, part of that says that Jesus uh, descended into hell, rose again from the dead on the third day. Uh, so it says that he descended into hell um, uh, and then rose again on the third day, which is what we obviously know. Uh, but did Jesus really ascend, uh, descend into hell? Did he really go to hell uh, in that one day when he was dead? Uh, that's a really important question to ask. And I know there's different uh, opinions about that. In fact, one of my friends, uh, he wrote an article about that. And he says, well, Jesus didn't go to hell. So I started to kind of look into this because, you know, I've been reading some of the um, uh, biblical scholarship just recently. And um, I wanted to kind of find out, like, what, what, did, what do some of the biblical scholars say? Did Jesus actually descend to hell or not? And, and actually, one of, the, one of the main cues we can find is in the book of, uh, it's actually in the letter of Peter uh, that he wrote. He says in uh, 2 Peter uh, 2, verse 4 and 5, For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but cast them into hell, and this is the word Tartarus in, uh, in Greek, and committed them to chains of gloomy darkness to be kept until the judgment, if he, had, if he did not spare the ancient world, but preserved Noah, a herald of righteousness with seven others when he brought a flood upon the world of the ungodly. So very interesting what he says right here. So, um, so, so those angels um, that sinned, they were sent to hell, to Tartarus, which is a place of suffering, basically for, uh, for the angels uh, initially, but it's also a place where supposedly humans uh, go to. But um, so these angels, they go there. Um, and actually in another um, a part of uh, First Peter uh, chapter three. Um, this is First Peter chapter three. Uh, it says something else. Uh, it, it, it talks about Christ also suffered once for our sins, the righteous for the unrighteous. He might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison, because they formerly did not obey when God's patience waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were brought safely through water. So here you see, um, this is um, First Peter, and I just read Second Peter, so there's a link between these two. He's talking about the same, very same situation right there. These, is, these are the angels that sinned in the time of Noah, and, uh, and they're in prison right now. They're in Tartarus, as the as Second Peter says. They're right there. And, and, and it says right here in, in, um, in 1 Peter that Christ suffered and then he died and, and he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison. And, and these are not people that Jesus preached to, people that, that lived before the time of Jesus. This is not the case. Um, this, is, this is angels. This is supernatural beings that uh, Jesus is preaching to. And, and Peter, um, it's important to understand the context of the Bible. It's important to kind of know uh, what other literature um, was going around in those days and uh, whether the biblical authors were, were making use of some of the language of those letters, even though they may not be in the Bible, they can still have value for the biblical writer. And if they have value for the biblical writer, they have value for the readers of the letter or any other documents. And they should have value for us as well. We need to kind of know at least some basic stuff about about these things and um, so so there's this reference right here to Noah and this goes back all the way to Genesis chapter 6 and and if you if you know Genesis well uh, this is the story where um, uh, where basically Noah is told to build a boat 
and there's going to be a flood and he's working on this for many 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 years everybody thinks he's crazy um and and then what happens is that this flood comes but before the flood comes there's this this is this is really odd thing at the beginning of chapter six it's, it speaks about the sons of god who um have sexual relations with human women with the daughters of women the the, the, the daughters of men sorry and so they have these uh so they're 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 having sex with these uh, so these spiritual beings, these sons of God, or sons of the gods, they have have spiritual in, they have they have sexual intercourse with these women, and they their offspring are giants, uh, and whether these are actually giants like like really tall or whether it's it it, it was something different, I don't uh, really know. There's there's um I'm sure there's scholarship or, about that, but what happens is that these people, these this offspring, they're called the Nephilim. Um, then the Bible actually uses that term, the Nephilim. Um, but this whole story, so we got we got First and Second Peter, and even uh, I think it's Jude, uh, Jude who's also speaking about this. And then you got Genesis right there. Uh, and then there's this other book. It's called First Enoch. And and First Enoch is not a biblical. It's not it's not in in your Bibles. It's um, it's a um, it's a, a Jewish document in the intertestamental period. It's basically between the Old and the New Testament. And this, um, this, this book, First Enoch, speaks about this person, Enoch, uh, which, which is from the days of Noah. Um, and it's kind of like a commentary on what's, what's going on here in Genesis chapter 6 and what's, what, what Peter talks about, um, kind of borrows from the First Enoch language. So, so First Enoch um, speaks about a, uh, this situation where these uh, sons of God are mating with these human women. And, and they basically gather together, I think it's like 20 or uh, 200 of them or something, um, I read. Um, and so, so they make this pact, um, and this pact is made on Mount, Mount Hermon, which is the highest mountain in northern Israel. Uh, we're going to check it out ourselves in a couple of weeks from now. And uh, so they, so they form this pact right there, and they basically say like, hey, let's do this. Let's make our own images. Let's make our own children, our own, um, like our, our, our new improved version of Adam and Eve. Um, and, and we put our DNA in there as, as, as sons of God. And, and then there's this human DNA as well. And they're going to, you know, they're going to be loyal to us, I guess. So, uh, so they do that. They, they form this pact and they actually do it. And then this offspring comes as Genesis describes. There's these, there's these giants, these, these Nephilim that are being birthed as a result of that. And then, um, and then, uh, so, so, so they come, they, they pervert the earth like never before. I mean, it was already bad because of Adam and Eve's sin and how this kind of went on from, from one generation to the next generation. But in the time of Noah, it's like really bad. There's, there's, there's just violence. There's just, you know, um, sin. All this stuff is introduced by these sons of God. It's like the worst of the worst. I mean, we live in a bad world right now. Back then, it was even way, way worse than, than what we're experiencing at the moment. So, so, so this is what's happening. God is seeing it. And he's like, I'm done with this. I'm done with planet Earth. I'm done with the humans and and what they're do, what's happening with these uh, these um, um, these um, these Nephilim and and the sons of God and everything. So I'm gonna send this flood. So what happens with these um, so these um, these uh, these spirits in prison, these um, um, these sons of God, they're uh, they're being put in uh, in jail. They're being put in prison. But you also have these uh, these Nephilim, and there the you know, flood comes over them. They die. What happens with the spirits? So they're they're like disembodied right now, and and so so you got these um, these nephilim, they um, they're dead. Um, their spirits are disembodied, um, and this is actually what the New Testament like. Sometimes you see demons in the New Testament. These are actually the spirits of these nephilim uh, that have died, and um, and they're um, they need a they they need a body to to basically function. And that's why, you know, when Jesus um, encounters this demoniac, the, I think the demoniac of the Gerasenes, you know, on the east side of the, of the, um, of the Sea of Galilee, um, these, um, these demons, they, they ask, was it there? Anyway, you know, you know the story. So these demons, they ask if they can go into this herd of swine because they need to have bodies. They need to have bodies to, um, to, to, to attach themselves to, to be able to function. If they're no longer in the people, they need to be somewhere else. You can't do without a body. That's the 
That's a special thing about these Nephilim spirits, these demons, really. So, but, but back to the sons of God. So, so they're like, they're chained. They're chained, they're, they're in prison, they're in uh, Tartarus, which is um, this, this, this prison where they're uh, basically getting ready for, for the day of judgment. And, and so, so first Enoch says that, um, that, that Enoch actually came and, and he went to these spirits and, and preached to them and, and announced to them that they're still doomed. They were trying to get out of there. They were hoping to be able to get out of there and that you know, their, time of, uh, their time of punishment was over. But Enoch, and this is what first Enoch describes, do with it whatever you want. But first Enoch says like, hey there, um, Enoch goes down there. He says, you're still doomed. And, and then the very same thing happens, you know, with Jesus. Um, and, and this is interesting because Paul sees Jesus as a, a new Adam, as a second Adam, right? So you see that language in, in some of Paul's letters. Peter sees Jesus as the second Enoch. So what the first Enoch did, the second Enoch, Jesus, does as well. And that's what, what, what happens. That's why Jesus went, went down to, to hell or Tartarus or prison or whatever you want to call it. He went there and he preached to the same um, spirits in prison. He, he preached to the same, um, you know, the, um, the sons of God that were being punished, that transgressed, that sinned, that rebelled against Yahweh. He preaches to them and he says the very same thing as he, Enoch said, you're, you're still doomed. You're still doomed. There's no hope for you anymore. And then obviously Jesus rises from the dead on the third day, which is, you know, powerful. But we got to realize Jesus did go down to um, Tartarus. He did go down to prison where um, the um, those spirits, those those angels were. That, that needed punishment. So this is a whole lot to say, but you know, there's so much depth in the, in the word of God and, 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 and we need to know some of those details uh, to fully understand what, what was going on and to fully understand what Jesus did and, and, and what he's still doing in our day today. And um, I, I mean, I'm excited about tomorrow. Um, I'll be speaking at, at our Hilversum campus um, and I'll be continuing with Psalm 22, uh, but there's some hopeful um, verses at the end of the at the end of the book that I'll be zooming in on, and I hope to see you there. It's going to be a powerful day. We're going to worship. We're going to, you know, uh, the roof is going to go off of that place, man. It's going to be awesome. And uh, so I hope to see you there. May God bless you, and um, I'll see you soon.